Watching his wife being wheeled away, Edmund thought he was about to film the first moments of his son's life. Instead, he recalls the moment that a massive blast rocks Beirut, sending broken glass all over her. I saw death with my own eyes. I started feeling, is it over? I was looking around at the ceiling, just waiting for it to fall on us. I didn't know what to do. Then I said, that's it. George should come. He has to come to life. And I have to be very strong. I shouldn't break down. Emmanuel was quickly moved into the corridor. But without electricity, nurses relied on the lights of people's phones to deliver baby George. My team, I'm extremely proud of. I think the true heroes, Emma and, and Eddie, they, they stayed so calm. They listened to everything that we said and they trusted in us to be able to take care of their son when the whole world was literally falling apart. As chaos reigned in the hospital and the streets of Beirut, in a dimly lit corridor, George's birth was a success. George is very special. And who will he is the light in the darkness or the birth in wreckage. Despite all the horror that was present around us, George was born in good health. While George and his parents escaped unscathed, 17 other people died in the hospital and dozens more were injured. Edmund's mother suffered several broken ribs and a punctured lung. George has now gone home, where his parents have been reflecting on the damage the blast did. We spent four days after the explosion laughing and crying. People around us were hurt, so we were afraid for them, but happy at the same time. The feeling is indescribable. To his parents, he is now known as Miracle George, the baby who survived a chaotic birth in a city left reeling from destruction. Now to Lebanon, where lawmakers have met to approve emergency measures following last week's devastating explosions, which destroyed the port of Beirut. The move gives the government wide-ranging powers, which critics worry could be used to crack down on protesters who blame politicians for the disaster. Meanwhile, volunteers from across the country have travelled to Beirut to help residents clear the streets of rubble. Plastic sheeting's being used to replace countless windows shattered by the blast, and the army's distributing boxes of food to residents, hundreds of thousands of whom have been left homeless. More than 170 people were killed in the blast and thousands more injured. Well, DW uh, correspondent Basel Aridi joins us uh, from Beirut. Uh, welcome, Basel. Uh, what changes to day-to-day -day life is, will a state of emergency bring? Not that much, especially that when we talk about state of emergency, even the law, it's so clear about it that the uh, military court will take the lead uh, in case of any uh, uh, criminal or justice uh, case, uh, judicial case. Uh, on the other hand, this means that the army will take the lead over all military and security forces in leading the uh, leading the investigation and uh, the security-wise security-wise in uh, in Beirut, especially that more one of the uh, most uh, destroyed places uh, in Beirut, like Jemaize and other areas in the other districts in Beirut, downtown Beirut. Uh, the 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 residents uh, live over there without windows, their windows or uh, doors. So they, their homes are completely destroyed. That's why the, the, the Lebanese armed forces, the LAF, taking the lead over that place to secure the area, to maintain and to ensure that uh, the, the residents over there can still live right. in their homes, homes or uh, residents, even though it's completely damaged in a secure way. On the other uh, hand... Let, let, let me just in, 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 in interrupt you there of, and, and, and just, yeah. uh, just move on uh, a touch, uh, Basel. Uh, let's talk about the, the investigation. Now that the government has resigned, who is handling the investigation and what progress is being made? We have to talk about two aspects here. First of all, when we talk about ground zero and this investigation at ground zero, this means that the, uh, the Lebanese uh, security agencies are taking the lead over there with the help of 
French team and some other teams that are helping uh, with the, the Lebanese uh, officials over there. Uh, today or during the under secretary, American under secretary David Hale visited to Lebanon, he said that might uh, the, the, uh, the FBI help the Lebanese in this issue. But the Lebanese are taking the lead until this moment. The other thing, the other aspect, it's uh, it's political. Uh, most of the Lebanese or the, the political uh, oppositional uh, parties in Lebanon, they are asking, and some of the Lebanese protesters as well, they are asking for international investigation because they, they don't trust the local authorities anymore. And it seems that uh, in the same level, when we talk about politics, the uh, Security Council, uh, or let's, let me call it uh, the, the Council of Justice, which acts as the Supreme Court in Lebanon, the highest court in Lebanon, until this moment, we didn't find a judge to take the lead of this investigation due to some political uh, clashes and political debate among some political parties. Uh, and at the same time, it's based on sectarian issue. That's why until this moment, after 10 days of the blast that took place at Beirut's harbor, we still have the investigation uh, uh, empty were uh, uh, just uh, local uh, ju uh, the, the investigation is just in the hand of the local uh, authorities i mean right. the security agencies and not in the terms of the court which is the supreme okay. court i mean right. basal Arini in beirut thank you